Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another OpenGL with Python and Pygame and all that fun stuff tutorial video. In this video, what I want to be showing you guys is how we can sort of navigate around this cube using uh, user key presses. So, one of the reasons why people use it with Pygame so often is Pygame has a lot of built-in functionality around user input and displaying those changes. So, when you slap OpenGL in, into the picture, it's relatively simple to kind of throw in OpenGL for the graphics stuff, but keep kind of the back end with Pygame. So that's what I'm going to be showing you guys uh, now. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, X out of this fancy spinning cube. And then let's go ahead and stop the cube from spinning. So we'll comment out in this main uh, function here. We're going to come out, comment out GL rotate the, the first one. We'll leave this, or I mean the second one rather, the one that's in the while true loop. We'll leave that one there. So now our cube uh, looks like this. Okay, so we're kind of over a little bit and just uh, looking at our cube. So now we'll close out of this fancy. And now we're going to throw in some typical uh, Pygame stuff. So for those of you who are familiar with Pygame, um, this should look pretty typical to you. For those of you who are not familiar with Pygame, um, I guess just follow along, and if you want to know more, check out the Pygame tutorial series. So, uh, this is our event loop, right? So for event, pygame.event.get, this is just any event that occurs. So if you're not, if you haven't watched the Pygame series, this is like, where is the mouse? Is the mouse clicking? What keys are being pressed? Is, is this window even an active window for the user? All that stuff is being captured in these Pygame events. So the first event is if it's a pygame.quit. The next one we're going to ask for is if it's a key press. So we can do something like this. If event.type equals pygame.key uh, down, what do we want? Um, so if the event.key equals pygame.k underscore left, that is a left arrow key. <clears throat> so if that's the case, uh, then we're going to do a GL translate. Well, we've we've done this before, right? This is right here, GL translate. So let's copy that and let's paste it here. Now, what was this translate? Remember, this was the Z variable. So let's make that zero. And if we pr press the um, if we press the left key, we want to move like side to side. So what would we put um, here uh, for X? Well, we want to move left. So we, what direction on the x-axis do we want to move? Well, we want to move left. That's a negative movement on the x-axis, so that would be a negative 1. Then we're going to say, basically, let's just copy this, copy that, uh, paste, and then instead of k left, let's say k right, and then instead of negative 1, it's a 1. Easy. Now, let's save and run that. Up pops our game. Now when we press the key, you can see we're moving around the uh, cube. Now, uh, we were obviously moving quite a bit. Uh, so first of all, we could move back a little bit, like negative 10. Let's see about that. So the cube's a little further. So now we have a little bit more space to like move around the cube. Um, you could also make the movements less, right? So we're using one, like a whole unit move. But we could all obviously do minus 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5, something like that. And that would make it a little bit less of a move each time. Um, and you can obviously do 0 0.1 and so on. So we'll close out of that. And now we can do the same thing for up and down, right? We can use the key up and key down. So uh, let's just uh, let's copy this. Uh, come down here. We'll paste. Instead of key right, we want key up. And then this can be a 0. And then for up, we want to move up on a y-axis. Now, this is a little different than what you're going to be used to with Pygame, but just go with me. We'll put a 1 there. And then we'll copy this, uh, paste, and now it's going to be k underscore down, and we'll make that negative 1 movement. So let's save and run that again. And now we move up, down, left, right, diagonally. <laughs> you get the point. Uh, we're moving about the cube. Now there's one more movement that we have yet to cover, and that's zoom. So how do we zoom um, in and out of the cube? Well, that's a little bit more tricky, but uh, we're going to use the mouse wheel for that. And actually, in all of my Pygame tutorials, we have not covered the mouse wheel movement, uh, simply because the main purpose for rolling the wheel is for zoom. So 
here it is for you fine folks. So um, the next thing we're going to say, this is not a key press, right? The mouse wheel movement isn't uh, an official key down. Um, it's, it's a mouse movement. And then as I, if you did follow in the Pi Game tutorial uh, series, we learned that really the mouse presses, there's only, a one, there's only three, right? You've got the left press, you've got the press of the mouse wheel, and then you've got right click. But a mouse wheel is like its own thing entirely. So this one will be if event.type equals pygame dot all caps mouse button down. If it's a mouse button down, that means the wheel is a rolling. Okay. So uh, and if it's rolling forward, uh, it is a four, and if it's rolling in reverse, it is classified as a five. So uh, all we would do at this point is we would say if event.button equals four, then we'll run a translate. Let's just copy and paste one of these. So we'll copy and paste. We'll make this a zero. And we said four, uh, four is forward. So four would be 1.0, let's say. Um, so we're gonna move forward one unit. And then we can copy and paste this. Copy, come down here, paste. And we'll say now, if event button is a five, what do we want to do? We want to move backwards a unit, so we'll do that. Now we'll save and run that. And now when we roll our mouse, you'll see that we're zooming uh, towards an or away from the cube. We can make it go all the way away. And then obviously, and this is in in uh, in relation to where the cube is to us, so we can put it down here, no problem. And it's clearly like zooming under us, you know. Uh oh, I've lost it. <laughs> I lost the cube. <laughs> okay, uh, let me bring it back. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so there it is. We can move it over here, and that's why, like this kind of stuff, start is why you know using someone else's 3D environment is much easier. Oh, and we hadn't talked about clipping planes. That just reminded me. So you see how it just like disappears out, you know, out the back. That's because of the clipping plane. So let's talk about clipping plane. Um, so I had mentioned it, uh, I think, on the first OpenGL video. And that's these numbers here, right? This is Z near, Z far. This is the closer clipping plane. This is the further clipping plane. And then I was like, what the hell are clipping planes, <laughs> right? Uh, so here's our cube. And then, you know, you can go back and forth. And the clipping plane basically means, um, well, this is a close one. So at what point are we going to stop showing the object? So let's say the clipping plane is 3. Um, and actually, let's make the clipping plane like six, and then we'll make this clipping plane uh, twenty or twenty. We'll make it twenty. That'll do. So this clipping plane, from our perspective, six points out, it will stop showing the cube. Uh, not quite enough. We'll have, we'll uh, we'll knock it off a little bit. But you can you should already be seeing as you're zooming in, it's it's chipping things away. Um, and then outwards, as we scroll out, it just disappears eventually. And that's because of the, the far clipping plane. So it's like it's too far for us to be in view, so we'll get rid of it. So we can make this, you know, a 10. We can make this a f 7, maybe. That will make it easier. Yeah, so like you can see it like totally disappeared because of the clipping plane. And then same thing there. So this plane is, uh, in theory, 10 units out is the far clipping plane. So this, the rest of this cube is more than 10 units away. And then here we can zoom it in and this cube for the most part, all these parts of the cube are in, are close enough to our, uh, what was it, a seven? Yeah, seven units out clipping plane. So anyways, um, hopefully, it, and also this is gonna vary depending on like where we are in relation to the cube. So obviously, like here we are much closer to the cube as far as like relation to the cube. And you can see it disappears much earlier um, than it had when we were say, like ab above the cube like this, I suppose, like it's almost off of the screen. So it's really good about perspective. Anyway, um, that covers it. Again, I would just make your clipping plane like 0 0.1 and then like 50 or something. So it has plenty of room uh, to move about. So 50 lets us go pretty far back there before it disappears. It just really depends on like what your use actually is uh, as far as where you're going to put it. But anyway, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, in the next and coming videos, we're going to attempt to make a game out of this. So um, our first game was a 2D kind of object avoidance game. 
I see no reason why we can't now have a 3D object avoidance game where we're trying to avoid these nasty deadly cubes uh, from hitting us. So anyways, that's what you guys have to look forward to, so hopefully you're excited. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the section below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you for all of your support and subscriptions, and until next time.